Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily making. Ah, let me try that again. Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. That was a bit of a clumsy start. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, usually they're more elegantly studied than that one. And as usual, I do start with who I am, what I'm about. So I'll do that now. So in case you haven't heard this before, you can catch up. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion in champion for the divine feminine and i do these talks every day called messages to the masculine to inspire the feminine heart and today's topic today's broadcast is number 355 355 in fact and today's topic is um finding love is not playing hide and seek and that sounds kind of obvious but i want to get into a deeper level of it because the obvious part we'll talk about get out of the way but then we'll dive a little bit deeper because for some people, maybe not you, but some people you know, um, it was a nice way. It's a never-ending search for love that never shows up. And I want to help you cure that if that's one of your ailments. All right? So the first part, which is the surface thing about love, is love is pretty easy to find out there and to find inside. And I'm going to do a little bit of work on the inside part in a moment. But the thing about love out there is that we have this attachment to the perfection of love. I already see where this is going to go. Okay. (laughs) One of the challenges that we face as human beings is that we think that we need to be loved or receive love a certain way. And jumping right in, if you haven't read The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, I highly recommend it. Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, breaks down the five archetypes or the five ways that we as human beings tend to give, or I should say how we tend to prefer to give and receive love. And those five, in case you didn't know or just want to recap, is um, quality time, um, physical touch, uh, gifts, which is an interesting one to talk about. It's not one of mine, actually. Um, acts of service. And words of affirmation. I got them. Hey, remember all five. And so those five play out different ways in relationships where you and your partner perhaps have different primary love languages. So when you talk to each other or you share love with each other, you miss. So finding love can be challenging if you don't know about the fact that there's different ways of expressing love. So this part of it, because I've got about seven different spokes I'm already seeing for this talk. So we'll see where this goes. So the five love languages is a great place to start if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're wondering why you don't necessarily feel the connection or you don't know why they don't love you or express love. Because, for example, if your partner is one who prefers physical touch and you're someone who wants words of affirmation, they will keep touching you to show they love you and you want them to tell you they love you and you're not getting it. So the truth is, love is being expressed but you're not feeling it or you're not connected to it the way you think you should or think you ought to or think that... Sorry, let me back that up. You're not receiving it the way that you expect. That's a better way of putting it. The solution to this, which is very easy, it's in the book, by the way. Again, Gary Chapman's book, 50, uh, no, sorry, 50 Ways is my book. Gary Chapman's book, Five, <laughs> the Five Love Languages, speaks to the ways that you can learn to actually recognize your partner's way of expressing love and receive it accordingly. <clears throat> receive it accordingly. And also how you can tailor your way of expressing love so they receive it the way that works for them too. It's it's actually, for a lot of people, a game changer when it comes to relationships. And his book, in case you didn't know, was distilled from, I think, 30 years of being a therapist. So he'd really gotten the five main ways people express love in his tool belt and realized what was working, what wasn't working. And by helping his clients see the way that their partner was expressing love versus the way they were doing it, they could actually heal some rifts that they were in relationships. You can too. Just get the book. And I get no benefit from doing that but recommend it so that's one thing second part is and i mentioned drop this hint earlier about self-love we have this um presumption and i've talked about this before many times so i'm recapping for those of you watch my regular broadcast so just so you know it's not news or new for that matter but it may come out differently this time is we have this wiring inside that we should be loved when somebody loves us and so First of all, we're expecting that person to love us and we'd be happy with that. Secondly, we expect them to love us a certain way that we'll receive it, back to the love languages. Thirdly, 
We want them to love us to the level we can take on, and no more, or no less. Do you realize how hard you're making your partner's task? <laughs> it's challenging. So, self-love is probably one of the best ways to make loving somebody else easier, and to make receiving love from somebody else easier as well. I'll explain why in a second. So self-love, let's break that one down for a second. Self-love is a place where you can, and, and before I get to that, I just realized something just came up. For some people, self-love is, an, is a taboo because there's a feeling that if they love themselves, they're going to get too egotistical or narcissistic and won't be lovable. Forget it, that's not the truth. Forget that whole paradigm, it's not real. Self-love is a fundamental practice to actually honor and respect yourself. Nothing to do with ego or... Um, self-aggrandizing, I think it's the word, or any other level of narcissistic or selfish behavior. Self-love is a fundamental skill, tool, faculty, ability that will help you be whole, healthy, and lovable. Don't you want that? So doing practices that things that are self-loving from the one I offer all the time, which I'll give at the back end is homework, by the way. See, it's homework coming. Every time there's homework. Um, But it can be things like keeping your agreements, which could mean making less of them, by the way. For some of you, keeping agreements is a um, a whip that you whip yourself with because you think you should do more than you're doing. You don't have to do that, by the way. Set up your calendar, your agreements, your to-dos, and your, all these things you have planned in a way that works for you. What a concept. But by doing this, by setting up a calendar that works for you, by actually deleting things off your to-do list that won't fit, and making a list of things you do want to do that actually work for you, you actually create more self-support. And self-support is one of the qualities of self-love. And having these things work for you, and by the way, keeping agreements is a big part of the self-respect piece, and that's another piece I'll talk about maybe this time, maybe another time. So self-love practices can be from actually applying self-love to yourself. And again, I'll give you that as homework at the end. So in case I forget, you can remind me, but I'm sure I will remember, because I always do do give homework on these these videos. But it comes down to how you take care of yourself. So getting enough sleep, um, turning off the TV or the computer at a certain time of night so you can be relaxing, meditation, um, going for walks and exercising can be that way, diet and food that you take in. All these different things you do in your life are practices that are ideally self-love centered versus, well, I'm going to do it because I want to look good. Because some people do these things so they can be impressive at the gym or impressive to the, their possible dates, which is all well and good. But it's better if it's sourced from self-love and self-support first. Then the overflow is what you project out in the world. Because the other part of this is, is when you do, if you are doing like massive working out and eating healthy and trying to get really in great shape, but you don't love yourself, you won't be very attractive. Sorry. Whereas if you are in fact being self-loving and you're also getting fit and taking care of yourself and being healthy, first it will be easier because you love yourself enough to want to do these things. But secondly, it lets you make you more attractive. So it doesn't matter how good you look physically, without the self-love, self-love piece that actually is taking care of yourself, respecting yourself, honoring yourself, your, attract, your attraction level, your ability to be attractive is diminished drastically. So starting inside with self-love, massive advantage. Highly recommended. And again, I'll give you the homework at the end. So that's two components. Third component is finding love out there. As again, as again, I mentioned the title, this hide-and-seek idea. For many people, there's this... Um, how can I say this the right way? There's an ongoing um, search for love, the quest for love. I hope there's going to find out. There's going to show up somewhere. And it's really this um, vacating the role of self-love. Again, back to that. I'll get to that in a second. But here's where we, we do things, because we're wired this way. We'll feel complete when somebody loves us. We'll feel whole when somebody loves us. We'll feel lovable when somebody loves us. We'll feel worthy when somebody loves us. You get the theme here? It's actually the definition in a way, or or it's actually the the prime example of codependence. And codependence is one where we keep thinking the other person has the power to make us feel okay, which is a victim role, by the way. So, so, So codependence is an unhealthy practice. And another book I can recommend, it's the second book I'm recommending, by the way, is Conscious Loving by Gay and Katie Hendricks. This book was written probably back in the early 90s, I think. It's been around for a long time. 
And that book is probably the best breakdown and resolution of codependence I know of. So if codependence is one of your habits, traits, challenges, I recommend getting that book as well. Um, I'll, put, I'll, put the, I'll put these books in the comments below, I guess. I'll have to now because I'm talking about that. Um, so when you've done this piece of not being up there, hoping they'll fill you up, make you feel okay, you can start putting the love back inside. Again, as I mentioned in the earlier part, when you love yourself first, you become more attractive. And if you want to attract a healthy relationship, that's a good thing, you think? <laughs> so self-love always, in all the things I've said through this, this talk, comes back to taking care of yourself first. And it shows in different ways, as I mentioned, but self-love as a way of life, absolutely recommended. It's better than doctor's prescription for your health. Because self-love will also change your physiology. Yes, self-love is healing. Not only just to your heart emotionally, but to your heart physically. So I'll get to the assignment in a moment, getting close to that. Um, just see if anything else I want to put into this, because this is a big piece of the puzzle for a lot of people when it comes to relationships. For looking for love in all the wrong places, because they are. To start with love inside is the way to live life more health, in a more healthy way. To attract healthy relationships to attract relationships that are inspiring and additive to their life, not replacing something they're missing, and also to a place where they're not going to settle for less than they deserve. That's like a win, 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 win. <laughs> I hope you get the point. So, I think there's any more on this one that I was going to go with. Um, I think that covers it. I believe that's everything. So, just scanning back through what I said. So, homework. Let's give you that piece now, just because if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I give this homework quite often because it's a very easy homework. Yes, easy. I don't give hard homework, but it's also a game changer for many people. If you're someone who's out there looking for love in all the wrong places, and you're feeling you're left out and feeling empty and not getting what you want, this will change you for the better. It will change your life. It will change your image in the mirror. It will change your way of treating yourself. And it's called a self-love practice. It's not really hard. This is a five-minute exercise twice a day. Oh my God, can I do five minutes a day, twice a day? Oh, yes, you can. And you do it for 30 days and it will change your life. I guarantee it. And since I'm not selling anything, there's no money back on this. <laughs> Self-love practice is very simple. And it sounds so simple, but do not be deceived. It's a transformational experience. Take those five minutes in the morning, as I mentioned, or five minutes in the evening. In fact, do it both times. And look in the mirror. Okay, in front of your own mirror. It could be in the bathroom, the bedroom, wherever you've got a mirror. I recommend doing it in private because it's really about you becoming more vulnerable with yourself and it may be hard to do that with other people around. If it's easy for you to do that, it may not be so important, but if it's most people out there, you want some privacy for this. Look in the mirror, connect with your eyes in the mirror and say, sorry, before you do that, connect to your heart. You can put your hand over your heart, however you want to do that. You can just stand in silence. But the main thing is, is through your eyes, connect to your eyes in the mirror and see yourself clearly and look beyond the physical appearance. That's the other thing, by the way. Look deeper. Feel into where you actually reside inside. Look into your eyes so you see yourself inside the physical body. When you've done that and you're connected, you feel the connection. You actually feel your heart warming up, in fact. Then say to yourself, and say this gently and easily, say, I love me or I love you, however you want to say it, so you feel it on the inside. Repeat this for about five minutes. When you're done with this, you may want to go longer because it's totally a personal practice. But if you keep doing this, it will change your life. So again, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, every day for 30 days. If you miss a day, you can keep going or you can start over, your choice. But the plan, the intention is that we do 30 days in a row, you change a habit. By the way, habits generally take 21 to 35 days, depending on who you listen to, to change. I figure 30 days is a good estimate, one month. Focus on self-love like that. Especially if you're single, it will change your perspective relationship choices. It will change how you feel about going out on dates. It will change how you feel about being single. It will change everything for the better. I think that's it. So in summary, to come back to the completion of this, self-love is really the key. Learning to know what the five love languages are, as I mentioned at the beginning, and Conscious Loving are two books I recommend. I recommend my, I recommend my book in Why Not? I'll give my, third, my book in there as well. If you are challenged with relationships, my book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover will help you as well. So that's my book plug, as well as the other two books I recommended. Um, 
I'll put them in the comments below so you know what they are. But this is the thing. For many of us, we run, run, run through life, through the days, through everything we're doing, and we never spend time actually taking presence with ourselves. So that fight, that love, that love, sorry, that self-love practice I recommended, I just gave you, maybe the first time you spend five minutes with yourself. If it is, do it. And if it isn't, do it anyway. Either way, it's worth it to have it for your own love and life. If you're in the area of relationship challenge where you're not getting what you want, this will help you with that. will also help you with that is a conversation with me. Yes, a conversation with me. I offer on my website a thing called, well, I say let's chat is the actual menu choice, but it's actually a complimentary clarity conversation. It's a 30-minute conversation where I can help you get clear where you want to go, what you want to do, and if we want to work together, be transparent. You can sign up on my website, which is barryselby.com, click on let's chat, and we can have a chat. If you haven't seen my other broadcast, by the way, this is number 355 in an ongoing series of talks called Messages to the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. They are all on my business page, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, because it'll be replayed there, well, if you're already watching, you know where it is, but if you're not already watching it on YouTube, you can find them on my um, YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. It's all the same. The playlist is Messages to the Masculine. And if you are stuck, you have some questions about this broadcast, please put in the comments below and I'll answer them when I sign off. Again, I'll list the books, the three books, yes, including mine, in the comments below. Um, and if you have any questions, message me. If you want help, reach out to me. And practice self-love. It will change your life. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow for number 356. And uh, be good to yourself, because you deserve it. <laughs>